Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Principal Patroness of the Philippines. Please all stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, in the midst of our Advent preparation for the birth of Jesus, we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Principal Patroness of the Philippines. We focus our eyes on Mary, the woman God has chosen to be the mother of the Savior. As Mary lived up to her immaculate conception, listening to the word of God and keeping it, so we are challenged to continue living up to the privilege given to her for our sake. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, begging the Lord his pardon and his strength. For Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy.
God of merciless, forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Before the foundation of the world, the apostle pictures for us how God prepared Mary for her role as mother of the Savior. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the One who accomplishes all things according to the intention of His will, so that we might exist for the praise of His glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind 
what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I do not know man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the right of the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing with God will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. Ipagpamuhin po ninyo na marahan lang po akong mananalita sapagkat napansin ko masyadong malakas ang echo ng ating microphone baka maging garbled yung dating ng aking salita. Okay. So. The word immaculate comes from the word makula which means in Latin, stain. Kapag sinabing immaculate, means without stain. And this is a very important feast day for us, not only because the Blessed Mother, the Immaculate Conception, is considered the patroness of our country, but it speaks foremost of God's will. The beauty in God's plan. That when God, in His proper time, decided to prepare the vessel of the coming of the Son of God into the world, He decided to make preparations to have the Blessed Mother conceive without sin the stain of the stain of sin, original sin, in the womb of Saint Anne, the mother of our Blessed Mother. So this is a feast primarily, not only speaking about God's grace, but the Blessed Mother being prepared as a sacred vessel by which our Lord will be born into the world. She needs to become immaculate because of God's plan. Nasubukan niyo na po bang makakitang ihain sa inyo ang isang napakasarap na ulam? Imagine niyo, morkon, nakahain, mainit na mainit pa, pero inihain sa isang platong marumi. People will certainly have doubts to eat the food. Yes, they know the food is warm, but they will have doubts whether the food is clean because the plate remains dirty. 
ay gaano kasalap ang ulam na hihain kapag sa pinggang marumi na ihain malamang hindi ito kakainin. No wonder the Lord prepared the Immaculate Virgin to be conceived without original sin because of the role she had to play in anticipation of the coming of the Savior of the world. We will hear for the first time the word Immaculate Conception coming from the Blessed Mother herself. It was first pronounced on December 8 in the year 1854 by the Pope declaring the Blessed Mother to be Immaculate, the Immaculate Conception. When Bernadette Sibiru came face to face with the Blessed Mother, remember the story of words, at this point, the Blessed Mother appeared and told Bernadette to a shepherdess, uneducated, to go and construct a chapel there. In her honor, she asked the Blessed Virgin and said, uh, You want me to go to the parish priest, but who are you? Who am I going to say? Who told me to go and see? and tell him to construct a chapel here. And the Blessed Mother replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. That was four years in 1858 after the dogma has been proclaimed. So let us reflect on the beauty of God's plan as reflected in the life of the Blessed Mother. We know that the Blessed Mother is made all holy, full of grace because of God's plan. But the beauty of the Blessed Mother is not only because of God's work in her, but also she is beauty in the response because that she gave to the angel. The first thing that makes her beautiful in her response will be her utmost obedience. We know that obedience is very important. We know it's important to do the right thing. But it's also equally important to do the right thing with the right intention. And so what happens? We see the obedience of the Blessed Mothers to the plan that God gives her. Not necessarily because she understood immediately what was going to happen? That she's going to be the mother of the Savior. She did not worry about the whole staircase. She was just looking at the stair, the step in front of her. Many times when the Lord asks us to do something, we get worried about how to do everything right. When what is simply important is to get the first step right. It's not, enough. it's not good to worry about the whole staircase, but to just focus on the step in front of us. The Blessed Mother obeyed, not because she understood everything, but because she had more trust in the Lord. And that trust in the Lord to make her obey is what makes her beautiful. It's not enough to do the right thing, but also to know, to know the right thing, but it's also equally important to do it with the right intention. The second thing that made the Blessed Mother beautiful also in the eyes of God in her response will be her sense of accountability. Notice that in the first reading, we have this, the story of the fall of our first parents. And sure enough, when God asked, where are you? Adam showed up and said, God said, why did you eat the forbidden fruit? Oh, because she made me do it. What happens next? Eve goes on to reply to God after being asked, why did you do it? She goes on to say, because the serpent made me do it. And the poor serpent has nowhere to go. And the Lord said, well, because of what you have done, you will suffer the consequences. The Blessed Mother, for her part, 
has been given all the graces necessary. And yet, notice that when the Lord asked her through the angel, she did not decide to pass the talk, but instead tells the angel, let it be done to me according to your word. And sure enough, what happens was she made herself accountable for the gifts that she had received, said yes to the Lord. She could have passed it to someone else. But yet, taking into consideration all the gifts been given to her, she took hold of them and replied by being, by taking up into account her blessedness. My dear friends, there's nothing that makes us more beautiful in the eyes of God by being held accountable for the gifts that we receive. And most importantly, to our next reflection, notice how beautiful she became also because of her availability. She could have asked, please choose someone else. She could have said, I am not worthy to become the mother of the Savior. She could have said as many thousand possible excuses. And yet the Blessed Mother said, Yes, I say yes to God's plan. I made myself available. So my dear friends, the Lord is not lacking in power what is happening in the world. But most likely it is also because we do not participate in God's plan by saying yes to His plans for each one of us. Not that the Lord is lacking in power, but the Lord may be lacking in cooperation from our part. May we learn from the Blessed Mother that her availability became a blessing to everyone else. May our individual availability instead be a blessing to everyone else as well. May we learn from the beauty of the Blessed Mother to be obedient, to be accountable, and always be available. Please rise for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten and made consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We praise you, O God, our Almighty Father, who will that Mary, your son's mother, be celebrated by all generations in our great need, we ask, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. May Mary, the Immaculate Mother, intercede for the Christian people so that we may go forward in hope, relying on the help of Christ, we pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. May the Filipino nation never grow weary of invoking the Blessed Mother and always find refuge under her protection, we pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. 
may all who are facing trials, sufferings, and difficulties feel Mary's mother, motherly love. We pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. May our Christian families and communities be centers of joy and mutual support and be protectors of life from conception to old age. We pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. May all of us find in Mary a model of prayer, service, and obedience to God's will. May we listen to her as she points to Jesus and says, Do whatever he tells you. We pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. May the Lord welcome to the joy of paradise those who have gone ahead of us. We pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Father, as we rejoice in the privilege of Mary's Immaculate Conception, may we ourselves come to you, cleansed of all sin. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please stand. Pray, dear friends, to be sacrificing yours, be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice the praise and glory of His name for our good and the good of all His holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer to you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession may we be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son, and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride, without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away her offenses. You placed her above all others, to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model for holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. At the time he was betrayed, and then willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For it is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray to partake in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church to spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, the 
Francisco Bishop, know the Arab Synod Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours, O God, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Courage to pray. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, and dear apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace in the accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the Son of God's peace. Peace be with you. Sending 
the old Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be in
May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve Blessed Mary in her Immaculate Conception through Christ our Lord. May God, through the child bearing and the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the altar of love. Carry away with you the gifts of spiritual choice and heavenly rewards. Oh, and may the blessing of mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Oh, the Mass is ended. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.